Hey, thanks for tuning into the Land and Home Show. This episode is all about the housing market here in Kentucky, what has happened, what is happening, and what could happen in 2022. <music> Hey, I'm Stephen J.B. Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor here in Central Kentucky and beyond. Uh, as I stated earlier, this is all about the housing market, and uh, we're going to be focusing mainly on Kentucky, of course. That's where I'm licensed, but there will be a little bit of general uh, information about or at least my opinion, my educated opinion on things going on in the country uh, economically and rates wise and blah, 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 like that kind of stuff. Um, if you are looking for a particular place to start in this video, you can look in the description below. There are links to each little section that I'm talking about and those sections will be loan limits, um, the market in November and December of 2020, as well as what's happening here in January, sorry, November, December 2021, as well as what's happening here in January 2022. Uh, and then a few insights from, you know, just what I think about the market based on this information and the people I'm working with and the agents that I know. And then finally, we will conclude with just some outlooks, um, things that economists are saying, things that uh, are happening and like expected job stuff, economic stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, so kind of four parts and we're going to finally jump right in. So loan limits. Um, every year loan limits are somewhat modified based on things like inflation and I'm sure a bunch of other factors as well as just a bunch of subjective stuff, you know, like the Fed, for instance, th that's not a part of the government. They're just people who get chosen to control the economy. I'm being flippant, but not really. Anyway, loan limits uh, change just about every year. And depending on where you live, they're going to be a little bit different. Like if you live in Hawaii, an FHA loan limit is going to look a lot different than it does here in, in Kentucky. So I'm going to be talking about loan limits for the state of Kentucky. And of course, there's a link in the bottom of this uh, video if you want to kind of look up your own state or if you are looking for more information about these different types of loans. So with all that said, conventional or conforming loans. Um, these are just loans where, you know, your typical 20% down, uh, not considered a jumbo loan. So uh, this year for 2022, it's going to be $647,200. Uh, last year, it was somewhere around the $565,000 mark, meaning anything beyond this this new limit of 647200 anything beyond that is going to be considered a jumbo loan and a jumbo loan means that it's non conforming meaning that there are going to be different rules around borrowing that rules around maybe your income or the source of your income rules around um uh, your risk level because the house is much more expensive than this conforming uh, value of 647200 um, there's going to be all sorts of things. Uh, so this is the jumbo loan limit, meaning once you get beyond 647,200, it will then be considered a jumbo loan. Um, so conforming slash conventional loans, uh, $647,200. FHA loans are going to be at $420,680. Uh, last year, it was somewhere in the threes, I, at least again here in Kentucky, um, that is going to be very different if you live somewhere else. I'm going to repeat this a lot because some of you don't really read the descriptions or maybe just don't catch what I say, but these are loan limits for Kentucky. Um, they may happen to be the same as some other place, but I'm specifically talking about Kentucky. So for FHA loans, again, here in Kentucky, $420,680. Um, and then the USDA rural housing, uh, technically that is a loan that usually, um, what's the word I'm trying to, to, to say, uh, usually coincides with the conventional conforming loan, but because of the debt to income ratio uh, aspect of a USDA rural housing loan, most people never really quite get to uh, exploit the entire limit that the USDA rural housing puts on for that type of loan. Um, and again, if you don't know anything about that loan, um, that also has 
specific geographical limits. Um, for instance, here in Lexington, Kentucky, where I live, there's no part of, of Fayette County where Lexington is that um, that qualifies for rural housing. And again, rural housing loan, this is not the type of loan that has anything to do with farming or any of that, even though it has that USDA marker on it. Um, this is more just a, a program that was started um, by the government so that people could feel more, I guess, excited from a financial aspect to live in rural spaces. So Lexington is not considered any type of rural space for this type of loan. There are plenty of horse farms and things like that, but again, this really has nothing to do with farming, so to speak. This is more about population density, economic prosperity, that kind of stuff. That's where the government d determines where these rural spaces are. So um, Lexington, not one of those spaces. Uh, Louisville, where Jefferson County is, not one of those places, but there are lots of counties out of our 120 that qualify as USDA rural housing areas. Um, so that limit is 647 200 just like the conventional slash conforming loan. However, again, those limits are really, really hard to reach in the, in the USDA standard for the rural housing loan because there are debt to income things at play there that it would just, it'd be pretty hard to spend that much money and be able to spend that much money and then qualify income wise to buy a house uh, that expensive. Uh, then the last thing is just to reiterate that there are links below um, if you wanna look up stuff in your own locale or if you want to you know, look up stuff in another state uh, or look up stuff county by county in a particular state um, because that matters for some of these loans. So that's conventional uh, slash conforming 647, 200. Uh, FHA is 420,680. USDA is the same as the conventional and conforming loan, but again, the debt to income ratio comes into play. And then you can see the links at the bottom of this video. Um, okay, so that was loan limits. Uh, now we're gonna jump into sort of a two and a half month snapshot of the market. So. What you're gonna hear me talking about is um, numbers that happened in November and December, like two months ago and one month ago, and how they compared to a year ago, first of all. And then these numbers are all relative to the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors like territory. Like there are multiple MLSs. Like if you live out in Western Kentucky, there's a different association for realtors, but the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors covers, well, actually we just, I think we're combining with another section of Kentucky. It's like 20 counties. So that's where all of this information is coming from. Home sold with a realtor, um, or at least if it was for sale by owner, homes that may have been manually entered, like the stats may have been entered by a realtor um, who may have been representing that buyer or representing uh, that seller, but there wasn't two realtors. Anyway, I'm getting beside myself. Point is, uh, these are numbers that come from the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors. It, um, it, it's a lot of counties and this does not account for the entire state. So we're looking at a very regional aspect of Kentucky. Um, so in November of 2021, two months ago, there was an increase of about 18% of the amount of homes sold between November 2021 and the same time in 2020. So in a year's difference, 18% increase in homes sold. That number is 1,414 homes. Um, the median last year in November uh, was $228,000 for the, the median price of home, which is an increase in the median price since 2020 in November by about 14%. Um, and then total amount of dollars, like if you add up the price of every single home sold in 2021, you're looking at about $378 million worth of homes sold. Um, and that's an increase of 33% compared to November 2020. Uh, if we move on to December, you've got 1,421 homes sold. Um, I, for some reason, do not have a stat on how 
many more that is compared to 2020, but it is more. <laughs> um, the median average, sorry, the median price of homes sold was $225,000, which is an increase of about 7.7% compared to December 2020. And then uh, the volume, again, adding all of those home prices together was about $367 million. And that's an increase of about 22% compared to December 2020. And this all leads us to coming into the first quarter. And, and it's it's worth noting that, you know, November, December, January, it's very typical, excuse me, that these numbers are much lower than May, June, July, August, September. Um, a lot of things are dictated by weather here and certainly um, motivated by, you know, pulling kids out of school and starting new school, that type of thing. So the end of the first quarter and the beginning, sorry, the end of the fourth quarter and the beginning of the year or the first quarter is often a time when there's definite activity. Um, and obviously you can see the comparison, like in one year, things are going up, but in comparison to a 12 month calendar year, they're usually the least busy time compared to those warmer times. Um, so if we go into this month, into January, this won't be a comparison because the month's not over yet, um, at least on the day that I'm recording this. I think it's January 19th right now. Um, there are 454 homes sold so far in the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors. Um, and I'll try to find a map so you can see what counties that all encompasses, but I'm really not going to bother, <laughs> like, regurgitating each and every county that is. But in any case, 454 homes sold so far this month uh, with a median price of $227,000. So you can see that between November, December, January, that median price is not fluctuating very much. Um, the volume so far is about $119 million worth of real estate. And then if we just talk about, well, what's out there? Right now in LBARS, L-B-A-R, Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors, if we talk about their territory, um, we're talking about about 1,400 homes for sale. To be exact, 1,454 homes for sale. And that's all homes that are listed on the MLS. That does not account for for sale by owners or your cousin selling you a house and nobody knows about it because it's not really on the market. These are just these are homes on the open market being sold with the assistance of a listing agent. OK, and um, if we get much more local. So we were talking about all of Elbar, which is like tons and tons of counties. If we just kind of get into the most uh, most populated counties, counties that have the most homes sold, or if you want to think about it this way, the counties that touch Lexington um, and Lexington included, this is the breakdown. And this these are homes under $300,000 because that's really what most people are buying. Most people are buying in this less than $300,000 mark and maybe slightly above, but it's mostly under $300,000. So right now, if you wanted to buy a house under $300,000, um, and these are this is any house, condo, uh, townhouse, and single family, this is what you would find in Fayette County, which is where Lexington is. You'd find 48 homes that are actively for sale today. That's not a lot. Um, 46 homes in Scott County, where Georgetown is, that are actively for sale. 25 homes for sale in Clark County, which is where Winchester is. 56 homes in Madison County, which is where Richmond is. Five homes in Woodford County, which is where Versailles is. Uh, nine homes in Decimon County, which is where Nicholasville is, and 14 homes for sale in Bourbon County, which is where Paris is. And these are all homes that are under $300,000. Again, that number is significant because that's really what most people are looking for. Of course, there's million dollar homes, but that's not most people looking to buy them. Most people are looking for about 300000 and less. And those are the seven counties where you'll see most of the activity uh, happening in the Lexington Bluegrass like territory of realtors, association of realtors. Um, and so that brings me to some of my insights here. Um, first and foremost, it's still a seller's market. And the reason why is because there is a low supply 
or inventory. Those words are interchangeable in this real estate world, really any sales world. Um, and the demand is still high. I mean, when you have 48 homes under a certain price, certainly within the price range that most everybody wants a home, statistically speaking, 48 homes is not a lot to choose from, right? And then if you were to go down deep into those 48 homes and say, well, I want a single family home, or the, there's even less, even less of those in Lexington um, under $300,000. So think about that compared to how many people are actually looking to buy. There are certainly more than 20 or 25 or 48 or probably even 100 people that are actively looking to buy a home. And so because that supply is so low and the demand, meaning the people who want to buy seriously, uh, is so high. And when I say serious, I mean, they're actively looking, they have the money, they're ready to do it. They're just looking for the right place. Um, that's, that's where that dynamic comes in. And so even though this is a slower time in our market from a how many things are actively for sale, um, that means that maybe there's less buyers, meaning there's maybe just a little less competition. So you, you're seeing a little bit of the cooling of the market where things are kind of they're on the market for a longer time versus maybe May or June or July, but um, it's still the game of musical chairs. They're just not, there are not enough chairs for people to sit down. There aren't. And that's, that's irrespective of the time of year. That has been the story of this. Coronavirus has played a role, of course, but Lexington has had an inventory issue much longer than we've been dealing with COVID. So um, it's not COVID's fault. Um, I'm personally tired of hearing people blame things on COVID that may not actually have anything to do with it. That's a different economic story for a different day. But um, this is not just a COVID thing. This is a this is a Lexington area like our population's increasing thing. We can't build houses fast enough thing. And then you add in the supply chain things that have happened since COVID has been a thing. Um, it, it's a very complex or at least a multifaceted issue, and I don't see it uh, changing, uh, which leads me into my outlooks. Um, I read a lot. It's my job. Um, I, I read a lot about real estate in particular, and people ask me constantly, you know, when will the market crash or I'll wait till the market to crash. And, you know, it, it very well could crash in other places. I do not see it crashing here. Um, we have a very healthy uh, employment market here, even with the labor shortages and stuff. Um, we have a very healthy tax base to like keep our city running and keep our counties running, um, at least here in this like Lexington area. I can't speak for you know what's happening in Western Kentucky, and I certainly can't speak of what's happening in Eastern Kentucky, although I do know in Eastern Kentucky there are tons of people leaving. Um, that's according to census data and just according to these fights we're having about redistricting um, our congressional districts and stuff like that. Um, I'm getting a little bit off track, but I don't see the market crashing here. Um, there may be market crashes in some of these coastal areas. Like, you know, a lot of people are leaving California. A lot of people are leaving New York. And the reasons for that, um, is, you know, spare me your political comments. This is not a, a political channel, but um, some of those reasons may be political. Um, some of those reasons are because housing is just really, really expensive in those places. Um, and some of that may be because of job opportunities. Um, various places in the South are seeing, you know, an increase in jobs, whether that's Alabama or Texas or Georgia. Um, things are changing in the South as well as in Kentucky. So I'm speaking a little bit more generally now, but I, I don't see the market crashing in like this middle Southern and Southern region because um, it's affordable to live here. It is, uh, you can find work, um, whether you're working in the auto industry or you're working in the steel industry, which is kind of like a thing that's quietly happening along the Gulf Coast down in like Alabama, Mississippi. Um, and, you know, the weather, people want to, they want to live in a place where they don't have to endure harsh winters or uh, nor'easters and things like that, or wildfires, et cetera, et cetera. There, so there's lots of reasons why people are moving to Southern locations, um, however Southern they may be. And where Kentucky is concerned, I, I do not personally see like this, I don't see signs, any economic indicators that the market's just 
going to crash here. And if you remind yourself or do a little bit of research, um, even when there was a big national market crash uh, in what was that 2008 and 2009, even when that happened, there were still places, there were still local, like hyper local regions in the United States where there was like a little dip in these local housing markets. But because people wanted to be there, they didn't see the kind of plummet that a place like where I, I'm from saw. When I lived in Michigan, you, you could not sell a brand new construction house. I mean, these houses just sat empty, half built for years because the market was so bad there. But that's not always the case. So there's always exceptions to rules. And I guess in a roundabout way, I'm saying uh, I think that Kentucky is kind of an exception, at least for now. Maybe that ripple effect... Uh, might reach Kentucky eventually if there is some big market crash, but I, I don't think that this is one of the first places that we'll see that. There are too many people moving to Kentucky and surrounding areas, West Virginia, Tennessee, um, North Carolina, because North Carolina is kind of, it's I wouldn't put it in the same category as like New York, uh, but there are lots of people moving to all of these different interior states and these Southern states. Um, too many people that are paying taxes and gainfully employed for um, for this massive like seems like a hope for some people depending on who you're talking to for this massive hope and wishing that like the market will just crash I don't see it happening but that's my two cents it's YouTube you know if I turn out to be wrong I'm, I'm happy to admit it uh, it's just not what I see and you know I'll probably come up on here if, if that ever happens just to be like I was wrong but I just don't see it happening. Um, and then let's end with interest rates. Um, this is a quick one. Interest rates are pretty much expected to increase on some level. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of economists um, suspect that we will see some interest rates uh, rise. Still most likely under 4% if you're talking about mortgage in interest rates in particular. Um, but even with things like a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit, um, that is being utilized at a really, really great degree right now with people doing remodels on their homes and taking out cash to do other things. I, I don't know what, but um, those are some some crazy increasing rates. People uh, that are much smarter than me expect them to keep on going. And then uh, lastly, this is maybe more good news because um, I say maybe because none of us have a, a crystal ball, but um, there could be some modest gains in like savings yields. So like things like CDs and other types of savings accounts that are out there. I mean, there's lots of them with numbers, like 401k, like all sorts of savings accounts. But um, there is some chatter that there could be a little bit of a an advantage if you have one of those types of accounts because you, you may yield more between 22 and 2023. I know that was a lot. Um, please direct yourself to the description of this video that I've referenced mul multiple times because you can read more and you know come to your own conclusions. I'm just trying to report it straight. Um, I mean, there was my opinion in there uh, in the middle, but as far as the stats, you know, what has sold for how much, what the figures are, um, that's just that is what it is, and you know you've got to either play ball or sit on the bench. Uh, right now, things are still pretty hot and that's reality. So deal in reality, uh, ask me your questions, leave your comments, and I'd be happy to chat with you in the comments or, or via email or something. I hope you have a wonderful winter and I will be back on here talking about something else here soon. But until then, adios.